I mean, look, you know, there are several people out there, you know, you know, who are genuinely concerned with the idea of overpopulation because our planet's resources are argued or said to be scarce. What are your thoughts about that? Uh, so I have some, uh, I have a bit of data on that. For example, um, uh, I mean, when they say that that the world is overpopulated, um, uh, and, and even if it's stretching it a bit in the next few decades, the point is it's going to start declining around 2080 or the year 2100. So the reverse problem is coming very soon, and there's mm -hmm. no solution in sight. There's mm -hmm. no economic incentive or solution in sight. Islam is the only viable uh, solution for this. But but even at the moment, even as we speak, Basam, like one third of the world's food is thrown away. Mm. Like we really got to think about that. One third of the world's food is thrown away. And this happens in all countries, including poor countries. So it comes back to what it comes back to mismanagement, right? Yeah. Mismanagement by governments, by producers, by farmers. Mm. Uh, a United Nations study in 2021 estimated that global food waste was nearly 1,000 million tons of food waste. Oh, man. Oh, man. Right. Overconsumption. Um, overconsumption. Yeah. Overconsumption, but also over waste, over exploitation, yeah. more than yeah. overpopulation, over exploitation. And this happens at all levels. Like it happens, you know, on the production level, on the post-production, on the packaging level, things that are packaged incorrectly get infested by vermin or they go off sooner uh, in the distribution and the transportation. Big retail. Uh, Basam, listen, man, here in Canada, when you walk into no frills, for people who don't know, no frills, a big grocery store uh, or Walmart, right? Um, you, you think they sell all that food? All of those oranges get sold? All of those bananas get sold? All of that gets eaten by human beings? Absolutely not, right? A lot of that gets thrown out. And rather than us becoming like, rather than us despairing about this, now here's where I want to make it more personal, right? Do you know, do you know on what level the largest amount of food wastage occurs, Bassam? It's us, man. It's us. It's the consumer. It's you and me. You know, it's you and me. Think about how much food gets thrown out from the fridge. We have to learn the difference be between best before dates and yeah. uh, uh, expiry dates. Mm -hmm. Yeah, th there's a difference, right? Um, I don't want anyone to take this as, as advice. I don't want to hold blogging theology responsible. I eat expired food all the time, man. It, it you know, it marinates. It's fine. But okay, okay, don't do that. But best before date doesn't mean it's expired. You know, it, it's just not like as as fresh or as well preserved, but it's not something that will get you sick. So so literacy, basic food literacy, we have to learn this kind of stuff. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, and if I may make an appeal, you know, especially to the brothers, I, I, I'm allowed to be a little bit harsher on the brothers being being a, a male myself. Look, man, when we go out for dinner and stuff, we're, we're not interested in salad, Bassam. We're not eating salad. You don't strike me as a salad, man, Bassam. When I look at you. <laughs> you, you look like a lamb chops, man. Yeah, you look like yeah. a beefsteak, man. You look like you want some chicken. My point is, mm. when we go to restaurants that we've already uh, frequented before, what is so difficult? What's the harm in asking the waitress or the server to say, uh, just hold back on the salad. Uh, don't serve the salad. Or give me half the rice, right? Uh, what is it about, uh, you know, I've heard in some of the Gulf states, people just throwing out food, like plates of plates of rice that would feed maybe uh, an entire family in Bangladesh. What made us so proud? Uh, when our prophet, peace be upon him, when he would finish eating, Aisha radiallahu anha said that it looked as if the plate had been cleaned. It looked like the plate had been cleaned. Licking your fingers is not some primitive thing. It's a sunnah. It's the sunnah to not waste food. So what made us so proud that we can't even package uh, that leftover food at the restaurant uh, in, I mean, I hate the term, but in a doggy bag to take home? I'm going to give the brothers a tip. Listen, that food tastes better the next day. It tastes better the next day. Put it in the fridge. It marinates all night. And the next afternoon when you open the fridge looking for some food, oh, I got that leftover lamb chop and some of that rice. It tastes even better. You'll taste the baraka in it the next day. So the change has to start with us, Bassam. Absolutely. Not, not overpopulation, uh, you know, exactly, over yeah. exploitation. And, and the thing is, listen to this, you know, um, here too Islam has the answers, you know. Here too Islam has the answers. In the Quran, A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitan Rajim, Ya Bani Adama, Eat, enjoy life, eat and drink. Don't be extravagant. Don't waste. You know, don't, don't, don't do that, right? Um, 
So, uh, I, I mean, th this is just this is just addressing one of the main concerns of people who are concerned about overpopulation, which is the food uh, scarcity. And no, we, we have enough food to feed everybody, uh, but we have to change uh, the, the way we think and the way we operate. And I believe human beings, inshallah, are are smart enough to do that. What happens to our faith in science when it comes to this issue? What, what, how come now <laughs> secular non-religious people, they suddenly become disbelievers and do kufr? Yeah of their belief in scientism. No, I have more faith that through science and through technology, we will do a better job. Absolutely, absolutely. You, 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 you spoke, I mean, some people argue that, you know, having fewer people on earth would be good for climate change and, and, and you know, preservation and, of animals. And, you, uh, and I'm sure as you're well, well, we're aware, it's all about sustainability and climate change. Uh, you know, these days, all corporations are striving to like, uh, you know, um, uh, amend their policies, uh, you know, towards, uh, you know, attaining certain, certain goals. So, you know, they'll, but they'll say, a lot of these advocates would say that, you know, having fewer people would be good, would be good for the environment, would be good for climate change. How would you respond to that? Because at the same yeah, time, yeah. Well, Islam well, does say you got to look after the environment, right? Yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. So, um, well, we could start with that, since you brought that up, that again, Islam, if we were just to act on it, if we were just to implement it, that, that's the challenge. Islam itself has the solutions for these problems. So, you know the hadith about how there was a man using a lot of water to do his ablutions, to do his wudu, yeah. Yeah. right? Um, and, and the Prophet, peace be upon him, checked him. And, and he said, is there extravagance, is there wastage even in doing ablution? In other words, I'm doing an act of worship. Like, this is a good thing. Does that count as wastage? Prophet, peace be upon him, said, even if you're at the bank of a, of a running river, you know, you just use the amount that you have to use. It's a mentality. Think about it. It's a mentality he's trying to put in us. So uh, using less water, right? Um, using uh, less electricity. There's so many things that we can change. Um, I'll, I'll quote because I, I know you're big on the references and, and, and all that. So uh, Dr. Anu uh, Ramaswamy, who is a professor of civil and environmental engineering at Princeton University, she said, fixating, being, being fixated on population decrease does not make much of a difference. Uh, she and other experts say the main problem, and you're right, there is ikhtilaf. I mean, I'm not denying. Yeah, yeah there are debates, definitely, right? Uh, but the experts who are on the side of saying that overpopulation is not a problem, they would say it's not overpopulated. It's burning fossil fuels is the problem. Burning fossil fuels is the problem. So again, as we switch to uh, more electricity, electric cars, uh, solar powered cars, hopefully, uh, I believe actually, maybe I have more faith in science that science will, if we implement it properly, if we research in the proper directions, science will solve many of the problems that science may have created uh, in the first place. And, and there's there's a lot that can be said on this, Basam. Urban planning, the way our cities are designed. Mm -hmm. You've come to Oakville. You 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 can't you can't buy you can't buy a carton of milk without getting into a car. You know that in Oakville. It's very difficult, right? So my point is for those who are unversed in this, you know, a lot of North American suburbs are designed really, really bad. You know what I mean? Um, mm -hmm. uh, similarly with overheating the climate, um, I had a slide, I don't know if I'll be able to pull that out now, but even the form of the lighting, lighting that points up, uh, versus lighting that points down, there's a lot that can be done to reduce, uh, uh our waste, our carbon emissions, uh, and things like that. And, and now as far as the animals go, um, now again, don't misunderstand me. Yes, we should preserve animal habitats. We can develop, uh, without, uh, you know, uh, harming them to the degree that we have. Um, but you know what, again, it goes back to kind of initial assumptions, right? Um, if, if we are not a special creation, if we human beings are not a special creation that deserve to exist, uh, or that should be propagating, how did the squirrel suddenly become worth saving? Just mm. think about that for a minute. Mm. Uh, how did the rabbit or the cow suddenly become worth saving? Shouldn't it be survival of the strongest or the smartest, right? Uh, I'm not actually arguing that, but I'm playing devil's advocate and saying that mm. just on an atheistic evolutionary uh, point of view, like what would be the problem with that? Species die out all the time. That's bound to happen. And from a humanistic point of view, uh, if there's less animals, if there's a greater human population, their habitats are supposedly decreasing or they, they should be, they should continue to decrease. There'll be less animals on the earth. Doesn't that translate into less animal suffering then? Is that not a good thing? <laughs> there's mm. less animals, there's less animal suffering. Think about it. There's no old age homes for sick squirrels. There's no old age homes for sick cows. There's no, there's no cancer treatment for, for old cows who have 
uh, old horses who have cancer, they die slow, miserable deaths sometime, uh, sometimes in nature. So they would have to explain why all of that is worth preserving. On a non-religious, atheistic worldview, all of that is difficult, in fact, impossible to do, Basan. Absolutely right. Absolutely right. Uh, you know, before we bring this to a close, I mean, are there any final words you'd like to leave, leave our listeners with? I think I accidentally already shared my final words in my okay. conclusion. Um, but just on a note of confidence, um, you see, the, well, here's what I'll say. The whole reason I kind of got interested in this topic in the first place mm. is because of me hearing this slur. Uh, from non-Muslims uh, that, you know, Islam is only growing fast because you make a lot of babies and they're reproducing like cockroaches. They're producing like this. Uh, and I really believe Muslims or, have to or, be more so, sorry, so, but, or, or as someone called it, breeding jihad. Uh, I saw that hashtag. Breeding was. jihad, yeah. <laughs> so I, I really think, I'm a big believer, Bassam, that instead of being instead of being defensive as our initial reaction, uh, we can we can we can spin this around you know so fast and say yeah hey why uh, what are you going to do but how come you can't do it we can do it how come you what's stopping you think about that let's get to the roots of the problem and you know we can insert and introduce Islam in this way and and we can do this with many many issues right whether it's gender issues whether it's jihad uh, you know um, you know well you guys only spread because you know you conquered all these lands invaded all these lands. Um, rather, uh, rather than being defensive immediately, I mean, how about trying? Yeah, we we were pretty good fighters, weren't we? Come to think about it, mm -hmm. how did that happen? How did a small band of Muslims conquer half of the Byzantine Empire, uh, eventually the entire Byzantine Empire, Persia, North yeah. Africa? How good did that point. happen? Now, now take what I'm saying with a pinch of salt. Of course, you know me. Yeah. We, of course, we want to clarify that. The, the faith of Islam, the conviction of Islam is not forced on the people, but Islam, the empire spread through military might. I don't have to apologize for that. Um, so be confident, young Muslims. Uh, and uh, uh, I think I'll, I'll leave it at that. Great. That's a great, great uh, note to end on. Barakallahu fikum, Akhi Sadat. I really appreciate it. I really, uh, you know, genuinely enjoyed uh, your presentation today. And I'm sure our listeners will, you know, benefit greatly from it as well. And with that, I want to part you and our listeners with the Islamic greetings of Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi.